Hello and welcome. How to set up your Python environment, Visual Studio Code and Jupyter Notebooks from scratch. I'm getting this request quite a lot to go over my setup. So I thought a quick video will be of help. First things first, downloading Python. So you go on python.org, downloads, and then you download a Python version. Which exact version? You have to check for dependency problems. So for instance, I know that TensorFlow and PyTorch are not working in 3.13, but they're working in 3.11. So if you have a very specific case, check if it's supported in the newest Python version. Now for now, for just an example, I'm downloading the newest Python version, which is 3.13. So click on download, allow, let it download, and then install it on your system. Just as a remark, I've gone through all these, you know, license agreements before the video in detail. So I'm just clicking through it for now. So then I allow that this is going to be installed on my system here. And with that, it is installing. While this running, just a comment on Anaconda. If you are a beginner in Python and you are working, let's say, in statistical analysis, data analysis, data science, or every related field, Anaconda is a good pick because you're just getting a lot of libraries integrated and you don't have to worry about installing stuff whatsoever. On the other hand, it's simply not flexible enough and you are running into dependency issues all the time. So my recommendation is to not use Anaconda, but it is perfectly fine to go with it anyway if you don't follow this recommendation for the beginning and also for uh, more intermediate advanced projects. Okay, Python installed. So we're going to close that, clean up here and then go through. So you can close that folder here. Then you go to Visual Studio Code, download and you download Visual Studio Code for your operating system. Same story as before, just going to download a file and then you install it. So just a comment on this as well. Some people say it's the best. Some people say PyCharm is the best. Some people say Sublime Text is the best. Everybody is basically lying or just stating their own preference. It depends on what you exactly need and also what is your simple preference. So try them all out for beginners, I recommend. Visual Studio Code has a lot of useful stuff integrated and will get you fast on track. So open it. Then I'm not doing a detailed uh, Visual Studio uh, guide here. So what you are going to do is simply you're going on extensions here on these squares and then you look for Python and install the Python extension. With that, you will have an easier time uh, maintaining your Python code and organizing it. So here in this, get started with Python development, you pick create Python file. And then you see a Python file is opening up, so we don't need that for now. I'm going to make this a bit larger maybe. And then you can start writing your Python code. So print hello. And then very important for Visual Studio code is that whenever you're making changes to a file, you have to save it. There is no, so you might be able to activate auto save, but by default auto save is not enabled. So you have to click command S for saving a file. So I'm just uh, calling that a test one for now and save it as a Python file. So congrats, you have created a Python file in your uh, user folder with that. So obviously you can also switch folders here, but I'm just working my user folder to make things uh, simple. So if you want to execute that file, you could uh, open the terminal and uh, 
yeah, let's actually do it that way. Might also be helpful. So you open up your terminal and then you uh, just can execute Python 3 test 1.py and with that you're getting the output hello. Obviously, so you execute a Python file and you have the code here, simple as that. You can also open the terminal within Visual Studio Code. I always forget the shortcut. I hope I uh, don't mess it up now. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it is. So it is Control Shift Plus, and then whatever this symbol is supposed to mean. So with that, you have the terminal within a Visual Studio Code, and now you could just uh, execute stuff here. So Python three test one pi hello so successfully uh, ran here. So if you make changes again, uh, print hello second time. So you have to save the file, very important, click on command S and then you can execute again. So hello second time. So if you don't save, just that you see it, if I print a one here, don't save and execute this again, you will not get the printout here. If you save it, you will get the printout. I mean, that's pretty much clear. Now, next, just some uh, good practice uh, stuff here. So if you want to install libraries, because you will need them very soon or later. So let's create a virtual environment. So that is also a very useful thing. So virtual environments in a nutshell are just managing your installed libraries. So you have uh, dependencies in one place. That's it. So you use the VNF library for that. So you could use Python three and then VNF and give it a name. I don't know, playground or anything like that. So with that, you've created a playground virtual environment. So if you screen for the folders here, uh, you will see that you have a playground uh, folder in your current folder. So obviously you won't most probably work in your home folder, but in some uh, project folder you have generated. I'm just not doing it out of pure laziness here. So this playground uh, folder you can use as your uh, virtual environment to activate it on Mac at least. So for Windows, it's even more straightforward. You just use um, the, the uh, virtual environment name, so playground in this case, then bin activate. So with that, and that's the interesting thing, you're getting this playground in parentheses before your username, because it's just telling you that you are in a virtual environment. And just if you have used Anaconda before, the standard virtual environment is called base. That's why you always get a base in front of your username once you have Anaconda. Uh, installed and then also for Anaconda you can create different virtual environments but this is the same uh, concept right so if you if you just install some library I don't know pip install some some library like uh, sorry for that uh, numpy uh, this will install numpy in your playground virtual environment so you see you have NumPy and pip installed in your playground environment. All right. So just as a side note, if you want to get out of this, you can just use deactivate and then you see no playground is in front of your uh, name anymore. Next, Jupyter Notebooks. So first of all, we need to install Jupyter Notebooks. So uh, you can just activate your playground or maybe it's stored in, in the previous command somewhere. Yeah, perfect. You can activate it and then uh, install pip install Jupyter. And then you're getting a lot of uh, dependencies here to be installed for that library. So looks like 
everything went through yes so all good everything was was installed let's quickly confirm pip list well you have a ton of libraries now because there are just so many dependencies for jupyter uh, notebook but you can you can run it now by simply using uh, jupyter Uh, let me quickly check. I messed up the command here. Uh, Jupyter Notebook, obviously. Yeah, Jupyter Notebook. Then a uh, file like this will open. Not a file, sorry. A, a browser tab like this will open. And then you can uh, get a new, open a Python kernel. Uh, this is blocking the pop-up for some reason. And then you have... Uh, uh, interactive Jupyter Notebook, so you can print out stuff here as well. So this is then interactive Python. So all perfectly fine for now. Then just as bonus, you can also work with um, with IPYNB files. So just as background, this is an IPYNB file, an interactive Jupyter Notebook file. You can also work with them, which is quite convenient. In Visual Studio Code, so you can just go on extensions here, then Jupyter, Jupyter Notebook support. Yeah, I think this this one. And then uh, let me pull this a bit lower. Yeah. Then create a new, new Jupyter Notebook, and then you see Untitled One IPYNB. So this is just Notebook One, Notebook One, and then you can also use uh, interactive Python code here in your uh, in your notebook. Then very important here, you have to select the kernel. So uh, we have to pass our our Python kernel here. Uh, so we are just using the three twelve one I've set up. So with that, you can use interactive notebooks. So with that, you are set up perfectly so just to summarize you have installed python you have installed um, code editor you can create python files execute them you can set up a virtual environment you can uh, set up interactive notebooks and that is basically more than enough to get you on track so i hope this was helpful and uh, yeah have fun let me know if you got into any roadblocks and i thank you very much for watching cheers bye bye